and welcome to chapter 2 of My Sheep Hear My Voice, the 2021 edition. I hope you've been enjoying the study so far. Um, at some point you are going to have to decide that you're going to go for this and that you want to know Jesus. The greatest gift that Jesus possibly could have given us, the gift of eternal life. And that gift is available to you. He died so that that gift was available to you. It wasn't bought cheaply. So of all the things in life that people could be seeking, let's get straight into chapter 2 and look what we have to, uh, what Joseph brings to us first. He talks about um, motives and the things that people are seeking and the things that people are boasting in and showing off about. Glorying in is what it says in the scripture. It says here in Jeremiah 9, 23 to 24, Thus saith the Lord, let not the wise man glory in his wisdom, neither let the mighty man glory in his might. Let not the rich man glory in his riches, but let him that glorieth glory in this, that he understandeth and knoweth me, that I am the Lord which exercise loving kindness, judgment and righteousness in the earth, for these things I delight, saith the Lord. Now when the Lord says not to glory and wisdom and power and all those sort of things, glory means to boast, to show off about. It doesn't matter if you're rich or poor, it doesn't matter if you're strong or weak. In fact, Jesus particularly pays attention to the weak and the poor because he's an amazing God and he wants to display his strength. And we need to be people that boast about the greatest gift that we've been given, that gift to know him. It, the same as what we're seeking. The only thing we should be seeking in this life is Jesus Christ, the one who died for us. That relationship with him should be something we're pursuing. So I'd like you all to uh, consider the first question that we'll, you can discuss in your groups, or at least everyone needs to look at it and consider it, is what do you boast in? What is it that you're after? And a key point to this is that even hearing God's voice can be done for selfish motives. You know, some people, yes, they want to hear God's voice, but we shared a little bit last week about this. They seek him for what they want, the answers to what they want. So I'm running out of money or there's a bit of pressure coming. So I'll seek God because I need the answer to get through that. Now that might look right, but it's not really love motive. It's, it's more like a selfish motive that looks like love. You just want God to get you out of something. Now he does, and he does want you to seek him on those things. But when we come to him, it must be love. It must be, Lord, whatever you want. I'm going for because sometimes his answers and decisions don't make sense especially to the carnal mind they will not make sense to the carnal mind so make sure that your motive is right and also when you're seeking God of course and make sure that you're boasting about the right thing the right thing in your relationship with God that we as human beings as as what may be seem insignificant, and I don't believe anyone is insignificant, but you know, in our, our normal lives that God has come in and he's given us this opportunity to know him, that's quite amazing. It's, it's absolutely amazing. So make the most of that and check and discuss amongst yourselves what are you boasting in, what are you showing off about, what is it that you glory in, what, what is it that you're reveling. Hopefully it's a relationship with Jesus. And if it isn't, it should be going forward. Amen? Amen. Now we know Joseph talks in this chapter about theology, about truly knowing God and what pure theology is. Pure theology is the personal study of God ourselves. You see, theology that maybe sometimes is, is taught in seminary or Bible school is knowledge, it's information. But there's not really a requirement for the person to be tested on that. And what, we ha what happens then is we have, it, it's a possibility that we have many hypocrites or people who know the right thing but do not do it and get themselves in trouble and constantly find God resisting them. Pure theology is the personal study of God himself, getting to know him and also obeying him, obeying the things that he shows you. Because as you obey the things he shows you, you also find out parts of his character, parts of his personality and who he is. You find out what he likes and doesn't like. But you must know God in reality. We can't know him from a distance. I often liken it, especially when I'm traveling, uh, to uh, you, you know a famous sports personality or TV person or celebrity, someone someone who you admire or someone who's famous. And you can do a Wikipedia search, you can find out all sorts of things about them. You can find out where they were born, you can find out likes and dislikes. You can read magazines to see the type of things they wear. You could read their biography or autobiography and find out what makes them tick. But the truth is, if you walk past them in the street, they wouldn't know who you are. They wouldn't high-five you, give you a hug, say how you're doing. They don't really know you, and you don't really know them. You just know about them. 
it's very similar. People often just read the Bible without that personal relationship with God. They often find out things about God. They, they see what other Christians do from a distance and, and they gauge what God is like. But the best way to find out who God really is, is for you to study him yourself, for you to develop that relationship. Amen. So make sure you do. And don't get caught up in just seeking knowledge and information. In the end, knowledge and information are going to be superseded by truth. When Jesus comes back, all our knowledge will be, it will be fragmentary. It will be tiny compared to the truth that Jesus brings and reveals. So let's make sure we seek the truth. And the truth is, the pers is a person. That person is Jesus Christ. Amen. Keep seeking him. Also remember previously that we recognized in the previous chapter that natural the natural mind cannot understand or comprehend the things of god now that's not a negative that's a positive thing because if only clever natural clever people could develop a relationship with god and get to know him and that's a problem i have with theology it's almost like we're the clever ones and you aren't well you know what i don't want to be clever i just want to know jesus now, there may be some cleverness that comes in there or wisdom that comes in there. But that wisdom comes from him. So the beauty of the fact that the carnal and natural mind, whatever kind of degree you've got or whatever low education you've got, maybe no education, it doesn't matter. If you're using your carnal mind, you cannot understand the things of God. But if you will allow the spirit to teach you to reveal things to you if you make sure that you're close to him when you study and learn if you walk with jesus you'll have you, your mind will develop and you'll have that spiritual mind the the mind of the holy spirit where you understand spiritual things this this gospel this message of intimacy with jesus and walking with him is available to everybody whatever your social status whatever your class whatever your education don't let clever people put you off. Just concentrate on knowing him and getting to know him yourself. Amen? Amen. It's dangerous to believe that everything you believe, uh, it's dangerous to think that everything you believe is the truth. As we grow, more light comes to us. God reveals more things. And we're called to be people who, who grow in grace and grow in the knowledge of God. And as we get to know him, he's the one who reveals truth to us. So don't assume that everything you know, everything you believe is right. In a, in a group, at any size group, maybe the group you're in right now, everyone could have a different opinion on a subject, but there's only one that really matters, and that's Jesus' opinion. And that would be the truth. So make sure that you're people who seek truth. And remember, the Holy Spirit is the only one who can reveal truth to you. Now, when that truth is revealed, it's normally for you. When God reveals something, it isn't normally just to make you feel good and wow, I found out something amazing. Most often, it applies to you. Most often, it's something you have to do. So make sure that as you are studying the scriptures, and hopefully you're doing that by now because we're moving on quite rapidly, so hopefully you are now taking time to study the word and read the Bible in the light of the Holy Spirit. And anything that comes to you should be for you. Now you might think of lots of other people that that scripture applies to, but it's not your responsibility to bring that to them. Not yet anyway, maybe sometime. But for now, your responsibility is to find out what God is speaking to you and then try and apply it. Be a person who's tested by trial or tested by experience. Don't just be a hypocrite. Look what Paul said to Timothy here in, in 2 Timothy 2.15 in the Amplified. Study and be eager and do your utmost to present yourself to God approved, tested by trial. A workman who has no cause to be ashamed, correctly analysing and accurately dividing, rightly handling and skillfully teaching the word of truth. I will hold up there before you all start trying to teach each other. He's talk, this is Paul talking to Timothy. So if you're a Timothy, maybe that could apply to you. But if you're not a Timothy, then I suggest you at least look at the principles in here, which means that you pass on what you've got working, not knowledge and information that you just have. And have it working in your life. Find out what God has got for you and get it working, because God is an amazing God. We're not looking for mental understanding. We're looking for growth. Amen. And it says, study and eager, St be, study and be eager and do your utmost to present yourself to God. And a question I'd ask, are you doing your utmost to present yourself to God? 
Or are you just giving him a bit of your time? Are you giving him your best time or all your time? Are you giving him some of your time? Or are you giving him everything? Are you giving everything to him? Do your utmost to present yourself to God as someone who doesn't need to be ashamed. If you're feeling guilty or nervous and uncomfortable about your relationship with God, then get right with him. Repent. Confess. Repent. And get right with him. He is a good God. But if you feel uncomfortable and you know you're not doing things right, then you know that you are a workman or a worker who should be ashamed. And I'm not saying any of this to condemn you. What I'm saying is there is a way. You turn to Jesus right now even. Turn to Jesus and ask him to forgive you. And he is faithful and just and will if you will confess and admit where you're at. Amen. So do your utmost. Do your utmost for him. On any given Sunday... We have lots of songs and lots of those songs might say, I love you, Lord, I love you, Jesus. And those songs are nice and sometimes God responds to those things. Sometimes he resists them. And God is really looking at the heart. He's looking at everyone's heart. The real love language of God, and you must know this by now, is obedience to his commands. If you love him, you'll obey his commands. And the Bible also talks about him coming to dwell and make his abode in you. He and the Father, if you will continually obey. You might not suddenly have a fantastic, super spiritual walk. It may be a little bit up and down. But if you will continue to be obedient, repent and confess and repent when you need to. Turn to him. Do your utmost to stay close. And if you will do that, then eventually if you will continue to be obedient without knowing the reasons why you need to be obedient, he and the Father will come and make their abode in you, manifest themselves to you. Think about that. How amazing is that? That Jesus and the Father will make themselves real and known to you. That is real intimacy and that's what we should be looking for. So it starts with being obedient to Jesus' commandments. We, we know that because it says here in John fourteen twenty one to 25. He that hath my commandments and keepeth them, he it is that loveth me. And he that loveth me shall be loved of the Father. And I will love him and I'll manifest myself to him. Judas saith unto him, not Iscariot, Lord, how is it that thou wilt manifest thyself unto us and not unto the world? And Jesus answered and said to him, If a man love me, he will keep my words, and my Father will love him, and we will come down unto him and make our abode with him. An abode, a resting place, a place of residence, God at residence in you. That is the beauty of the Christian life. And if you really want that, if you feel like your relationship with God isn't as close as you want it to be, if you feel distant from God, get close and then be obedient and let Jesus and the Father move in and reign and your Christian walk will take off tremendously. Amen? What a gift. And one key point that Joseph mentions in the book that's in bold in chapter 2, he says you do not lose your salvation when you do not obey the Lord. He does not disown you because you are rebellious, but you miss the blessing of communion with God when you are in sin. You do not lose your salvation when you're disobedient. Now, I'm not encouraging anyone to be disobedient. Jesus is a good and wonderful saviour, but he has to be your Lord if you really want to know him. And I don't know what the full outcome is, and I don't want to prophesy, and I don't want to say something I'm not clear on. And if you're thinking about heaven and hell, are we going to heaven or are we going to hell? Well, I just want to be wherever God is. I don't know if you understand that or not. I want to be in the kingdom, kingdom of God. If you're in the kingdom of God, it doesn't matter where that kingdom is, whether that kingdom's on this planet or when that kingdom's in a, in, on another planet or whether it's in heaven. I don't mind where that kingdom is, the kingdom of God. I just want to be in it. And heaven and hell, really, they're almost like distractions because a lot of people just want to be saved from hell. Well, why do you want to be saved from hell? I mean, I understand why, sorry. I do understand why. But the beauty of the Christian message is that you can know God, that you can really be reunited with the God who made you, how it should have really been before the fall. That's the beauty. So don't get too distracted by whether you are uh, going to go to hell or whether your salvation is going to be uh, out the window or thrown out. But if you continue to be disobedient, there are clear scriptures that talk about the wrath of God. If you continue to be disobedient, there's clear scriptures that say that talk about your name being blotted out the Lamb's Book of Life. 
I'm not trying to scare anyone. I don't want you to build your relationship with God on fear. I want you to build your relationship with God on love, on the fact he loves you. And now you're going to love him in return. Amen? Amen. One final point is that we're not to have any more excuses for not walking with him. There can't be any more excuses. If you've never recognised how powerful God is and fallen on your knees, instead of treating him casually, if you've never done that, then you should do. It's not too late to turn to him and ask him for a close relationship, but that requires re repentance and submission and surrender. Surrender is a good thing. Don't let any negative thoughts come to tell you these things are hard and difficult. Don't let any negative thoughts come to say uh, God is difficult, he's a hard taskmaster. He is the best Lord you could possibly have. He's the only one who really loves you. He loves you more than you even love yourself. He knows you more than you even know yourself. He is absolutely loving towards you and he wants the best for you. Every decision he will make will be for your good. Even if it doesn't look like it, it will be for your good. So, like Joseph put in the book, maybe you could surrender your life to the words of this song. It says, All to Jesus I surrender. All to him I freely give. I will ever love and trust him in his presence daily live. I surrender all. I surrender all, all to thee, my blessed Saviour, I surrender all. You have a short time on this planet, and that short time is going to be used to measure your eternity. You have a short time to make the most now on this planet of the gift of eternal life. I'd encourage you to do it. And to close, here's some questions for this week. What are you glorying in? What are you boasting in? What are you seeking after? Have you ever been caught up in the trap of seeking information without truly knowing Jesus? Do you understand what pure theology is? Discuss it. Are you doing your utmost to get to know Jesus or to seek him and be approved by him? Are you eager to study? Do you love and embrace God's written word? Do you have a desire to seek him in that word? Do you really love Jesus by Jesus' definition? Do you know what it takes to be a friend of Jesus? Are you still making excuses? Or have you surrendered in total brokenness before the loving Saviour?